Hey everyone, it's Alan over at Cobblers Plus and today we're going to be working on a pair of Danner work boots. Uh, might not be even a work boot, could be even a military style one. It really looks more like the military style, but a lot of guys out there and ladies use these for work boots as well. And interestingly, this is going to be the very first one that we're using what's called a turn welt. So it's a little bit different than a regular Goodyear welt. So come join us, check it out, and see what we're doing on them today. So again, thank you for joining us. And today, like I said, we're gonna be working on a pair of Danner work boots or military style boots, if you wanna call them that. Some people call them that. But uh, we're gonna be doing a few things on these that are a little bit different that I haven't shown on video yet. Uh, so one that we have shown on video is the double sole that we're gonna do. I just kind of pulled these off the shelf almost at random, but we're gonna do the Vibram Christie sole and then over top of it, a Vibram Sierra sole. And so that way you have the nice soft flexibility and comfort of the Christie sole with the strength, durability, and traction of the Sierra sole. Um, that's one of the things that we're going to do. The other thing is that these have kind of a busted up heel counter back here. It even makes a clicking noise every now and then depending where you push it. And so we're going to be sure to replace that as well. But uh, for, for, for now, I'm going to readjust the camera angle, go ahead and put these back on the shelf because we're not going to be getting to these quite yet, um, and then uh, start breaking down the boot and take it from there. So let's switch things around. All right, everyone. So I'm going to first thing and break these down. Now, I have had a request, which was kind of weird that the person thought that this was possible, but in the past I've had somebody ask me if we can replace the heel counter that's inside here that keeps that shape and everything. Um, you'll see that in a little bit once everything's torn down. Um, if we can replace the heel counter without, you know, having to remove the sole. No, that's not possible. The sole has to come off to a certain extent. But Actually, on these guys, what I'm going to do first is uh, deactivate the adhesive a little bit better before I start cutting into it, especially because this is a turn welt, so it's a little, uh, a little more finicky. But yeah, I've been, uh, I've had people request that, well, someone, at least an individual, but it's kind of like, mm, no, that, uh, that doesn't work out well. I mean, possibly we can pull something off but it would be such a horrible choppy job i don't even want to attempt that one there just because the person's going to come back to try to pick up their boots or shoes and heel liner is a different story those are very different but i wanted to kind of mention that there uh, let's see let's find a spot that it's already coming unglued and everything a little bit Now Turnwalt, there are other names for it as well, is basically they take this boot upper and they turn it and then they stitch to it directly where a Goodyear welt is a separate piece of leather that's, I'm grab, a different, I'm gonna grab one of these guys, a separate piece of welt that's stitched to the upper and then after that the upper is not stitched to, it's the welt that gets stitched to. So I think it's the type of midsole that they used. It's kind of a pain. Come on. All right, we're gonna have to let that uh, tolling sit and work its magic for a little bit before I really start cutting into it, I guess, and kind of take it from there. So give it a minute and I'll see you in a few. All right, so I had to mess around with it here for a little bit and make sure it started coming undone, but it looks like it's coming undone. So there we go. I just kind of have to pull it up just a little bit, but come on. Oops, let's drop that. I'm not used to using this guy too often. 
I'm used to that bigger knife, but it goes in way too deep, at least on these boots, and you'll see why here in a second. Well, it's not going to work with uh, on those knives there that I typically use for splitting welt. I need something a little bit shorter. I used to have this little tiny knife that was great for this kind of work, but the tip snapped on it eventually, and it was already so short that just, short, just uh, sanding it and uh, resharpening it and everything would make it just way too short. So I left the tip as is and repurposed the knife for basically little odds and ends, whatever I might need it for, but getting in to split up the welt, not the best, sadly anymore. It used to be my favorite knife always. I used it when I was learning to uh, take apart soles and stuff a long time ago, but Sadly, nothing lasts forever. Good lesson to learn also about boots and shoes. Eventually, they do get to a point where it's just not practical to get them redone. I mean, as long as you maintain them. Sadly, that knife, even though I maintained, I mean, the thing is old. It was being used daily and everything. So there was just no way of reworking it okay let's see i guess i'm not strong enough for that one i am not hulk the adhesive is really on there wow Just taking this guy apart might, might take a little while. These danners are tough as nails. Which is a good thing, right? Not for me. I gotta freaking tear them apart. Now, typically, a lot of these danners that we get in here, as you can tell, it already has almost like a double layer leather. I mean, double layered sole and we don't technically need to replace them because there's no cork or anything inside of them so the cork doesn't need to be replaced so we'd end up just basically replacing the base or just that uh traction there on the bottom um the midsole it can stay on it doesn't need to always be replaced but because we are having to replace the heel counter on these we definitely have to get in there and uh really take these apart and replace a lot of things gives you an idea everything's wanted to come apart there even the upper and stuff so this is not a fun job to do a number of shops don't even take these turn welts in um, there's another name for it and I'm gonna have to try to remember or wait until Marcus comes in and he was talking about it yesterday actually so spaced out on it but for the time being this kind of gives you an idea of what I'm gonna have to be sitting around and doing for quite a while and to not make this video too long like I normally do at least I mean not not longer than what I usually do at the very least you know I'm gonna go ahead and take off this sole the rest of the way and do the same thing to the mate and this kind of gives you a general idea of what's going on as you can tell I'm pulling on this upper Let me go ahead and take off the boot pulling off the upper here and there's that turn welt so they just take that upper turn it to the side turn it outward a little bit and stitch the midsole directly to it so it's uh it's definitely one of those kinds of jobs that is not an easy one to do and is kind of a pain in the butt so yeah it's uh it's not common either but we'll go ahead and take care of them and uh kind of take it from there so i'll see you back here in just a little bit once uh once I've got these broken down a little bit more. All right, everyone, so I've got this sole taken off. Oof, this thing was a pain in the butt. Um, I might do the other one a little bit different where I'll actually probably cut off the uh, crepe material because it's fairly soft, that, it, that I should be able to cut through it by hand. That way I have a little bit more flexibility and just have to cut off the midsole then. But uh, kind of a little interesting though, this crepe, bubbles up so when you get a little bit of acetone or toline on it it has like this 
effect where it just expands just in that one little spot and gets all soft and smushy. I don't know if that's a good thing. I don't think it is. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't think it is at all. Just just because sometimes these boots are worn around like chemicals and stuff, and who knows what might happen. So the shank got stuck to the sole here. It's a fiberglass shank. So I'm gonna have to. Ooh, that thing just shot clear across the table. I'll have to go pick that up later. But I, I was trying to avoid using any kind of thinners or uh, you know solvents directly on the uh, fiberglass shank. So at this point we've got it taken apart and we've got that cushion there. We've got the liner in here. This is an insulated liner. Man, that stuff is sticky. I really hate the adhesives that some of these companies use. It gets all over your hands. It's sticky and grody. But at this point, I haven't again, I haven't taken apart the other boot. I wanted to let you let everyone see. I'm gonna pull up this upper a little bit. And so there's the um, the heel counter right here, and there's a crack. There it is. You can see all those cracks, most likely. I don't know if the camera's catching it, but uh, let's see if I can get it up close. You can see all these cracks right there, and uh, it's a plastic one that they use, which is good. I don't know if it's say plastic, but some form of composite or something like that. So that's technically a good thing. I mean, because a lot of companies, they use some kind of fiberboard or basically cardboard in other words. So definitely, definitely a good thing from Danner's that they use. We're gonna be replacing it with a um, fiberglass version that's uh, heat moldable. And we get, it in, get them in large sheets and everything. And this one's gonna be a pain to remove as well. I really have to work at it. Okay. Oh man, it's just shattered back here. I'm not even gonna be able to use it to trace, basically, because the whole thing is just shot. Let's see if I can just pull out the chunk here. Uh, if there was no liner in here like these ones have, this would be a lot easier because we just open up the liner, fold it out and everything, but this liner is stitched in such a way in, into the boot that pulling it out is just not gonna be not gonna be the best of ideas to do. So it's gonna take a little bit of work in other words. Oh, man. That thing is really stuck in there with a lot of pieces that are just broken and Jeez, this is gonna be a tough on the hair for sure. All right, well, let me mess with this for a little bit and see how I can pull it out because I may have to grab tools, go back and forth, and it's just gonna be too much back and forth on the camera, um, recording and stuff. And then from there, I'll be able to show you what, what it's looking like. I really hope I can save this at least to kind of trace it out, but if not, um, I mean, the leather has left enough of an imprint where I can measure things out and go from there because you can see that kind of crease right there. That's uh, right where it ends. Yep, right there. So I could trace it all out on a piece of paper and then transfer it over. So yeah, I'll we'll go from go from there. Uh, no, this is not a knife. This is a heel pry that I'm pointing with. It's not sharp, so don't think I'm running a knife across and scratching or cutting into the leather. No, it is not a knife. But anyways, just wanted to give you guys an update on what's going on with this one right now. Yeah, there's a chunk of it right there. Uh, and uh, once, once I'm further along, I'll let you check it out and see what it's like on the inside. Well, not the inside, you can see on the inside already. Let's see what that uh, heel counter looks like once it's out and hopefully again I can take it out in as few pieces as possible or if so a whole piece just to kind of be able to even show you what it looks like so I'll see you back in just a little bit all right everyone <clears throat> so I've got these taken apart soles are all off on both pain in the butt to take them off definitely got the shanks taken care of looks like the shanks are all intact it's one reason why I like the fiberglass ones they hold up very well actually and then uh, as far as this area here, so on the first one I did, actually both of them I took out the heel counters already, so it's nice and soft there, but 
meal counter is in chunks. So, unfortunately, that's not going to work. So we're going to have to let these dry for a little bit because we did have to use a lot of uh, thinning agents. Make sure that it all evaporates. I don't know if I said cool off or what, but it needs to evaporate. And uh, But in the meantime, I can at least pull out the stitches and we're just going to do the stitch plucker like that all around. Because it is, after all, softer. So we'll go ahead and pull out all the stitches all around, let everything dry and evaporate. And we'll continue on. So we'll see you back here in just a little bit. All right, everyone. So I've got the uh, heel, new heel counters cut out here. This is comes out of a sheet. This is a fiberglass type material that uh, is basically heat activated. So once we heat it up, it becomes a little more pliable. And then once it dries, it hardens. It also has an adhesive uh, mixed into it so that it sticks and binds very nicely. But the first one I've got in here, it's literally just slid in right now. As you can tell, everything's all loose, everything's wide and sticking out and, and so on, basically. Now, typically with this kind of build, you well, not this kind of build, but in general, typically you would use a last to shape all of this. But because this one's got a booty and it's so like loose all around and everything, we want to make sure that we follow the exact same original factory like guides, all these little markings where there may have been a little nick, a scratch or something, all needs to line up as closely as possible. And that's what we're going to go ahead and take care of now at this point. Um, but we're going to have to heat this heel, new heel counter on, up a little bit to do so. And so as we once we heat it up, then we'll start shaping and everything and uh, relining it. Well, realigning the heel counter at least, and then we're going to let it sit and cure overnight. As frustrating as this thing is right now because it's not soft and pliable yet, but once we heat it up, it'll be... Uh, It'll be on track nicely. So let's heat it up. All right, so while it's hot, I gotta get this thing to sit right at the same markings and everything inside here try to get it done quickly come on seems like the adhesive has already wanted to stick everywhere oh, come on probably have to heat it up one more time get it all lined up nicely Problem is also this factory adhesive that they use on here is uh, very sticky also. So between the adhesive that's kind of embedded in that material there for the heel counter, it's uh, sticking to all the factory glue a lot too. I mean, it's a good thing, but at the same time kind of a bad thing. All right, now we got it on there. to do it like this here as much as I don't want to do it like this I'm gonna have to because this uh, little pad here and the liner in there is very much so getting in the way of trying to get everything to line up and sit just right so it's kind of a pain and this thing will stay soft for a good little while but that includes the adhesive as well. There we go. Okay, that lines up there. Okay. I almost wonder if a blue tree or a last would be better, but then at the same time, again, I had to move that liner out of the way, so. A good thing I went this route. No last. Much better. 
I already see a bad, bad problem coming across if I was trying to use a last because of that liner in here. It's all insulated and everything. So I'm just gonna make sure I'm pressing everything nicely. There we go. So we're just gonna leave it like this. We want it to cure. We're not gonna put any additional folds or anything. Uh, these originally from the factory uh, were just cut straight down and everything. And that's what we're gonna do as well. But I don't want to and can't do this until this sits and cools off and kind of cures overnight. So I'm gonna do the same thing with the other one. Let it sit and cure overnight. Try to remove it off this last carefully. So this is just a regular cobbler last. The last that I'm talking about are fitted. They fit in there all tight and everything. Almost like a, a boot tree or shoe tree like these here. But yeah, we don't want it sitting too tightly in these because it's just, you know, so, uh, so loose right now that we're going to be pulling in different directions and it's not going to turn out pretty or anything. Unless we had the original factory last having an aftermarket version there's going to be certain differences about it that it's just not going to line up at all so there we go we're done at this point i'm gonna let this sit and cure and then tomorrow morning we'll come in and continue on so i'll see you later all right everyone so i'm at this point now where i've gone ahead and glued the edging down to make sure everything sits nice and tight against this uh inlay here and uh then Got everything glued up, got the shank in place, and now at this point uh, we're able to glue on the midsole. I wasn't going to bother anybody with the gluing. It's literally very time consuming to allow everything to dry and just pressing it back into position and lining it up. But at this point, I just took this midsole out of the oven. Let's stick this all on here. I'll stick it on the press and I'll let it cool and cure for quite some time because the next step is that we're gonna have to stitch the midsole and we're stitching it by hand actually and when we're stitching I'll, I'll explain all the details on that but yeah these ones definitely have to be usually hand stitched on those machine stitching gets a little complicating but let me go ahead and stick them on the press while they're hot and uh, after curing and ready for stitching I'll see you back when we're gonna do that all right, everyone. So I've started up on the stitching um, just to give you an idea, and I'll, I'll go ahead and fast forward the rest of it to show you. But start right about here. Usually that's where most stitching is started is on the back end right under the heel. You can see right there. And it's literally just going around and stitching it. Now, what I didn't mention was uh, so stitching this can be done on a machine. Um, the dilemma is because oh, sorry, I'm using the drawer as almost like a mini vise in other words, but the dilemma is kind of the fact that uh, so the machine will do a good job of it, but because the boots are stitched upside down, um, aiming for the original factory holes is very difficult. And because the in this case, it's not a welt that we're using, we're using the upper of the boot to stitch the midsole on. And the problem with that is that the consistency of the leather is the same as what the upper is. And as you can see, it's very soft. So what happens is the machine's going to apply too much tension. So we can adjust for the tension on that. And the next dilemma is if, uh, if we have the tension adjusted, is again, we can't aim for the original factory holes. Even though I use one of the thinnest needles out there available for our machine to allow it to bend into the original holes. This leather is just far too soft to just, you know, get the needle forced uh, forced into position properly, and so it's not something that uh, that can be done very very well. I mean, there's going to be a spot or two here where the needle just did not go into the original holes, and so it creates a new hole. And I mean, it's. It, 
it's normal standard in a lot of cobbler shops where you know an extra hole or two are created which is fine on welt especially it's fine like goodyear welt uh storm welt and all those other ones that are a separate piece because eventually that welt's going to have to be replaced regardless well the problem with this is you can't exactly replace the uppers. I mean, I mean, you can replace panels and chunks and everything. I guess you can do it that way, but the cost will not, it will not be worth it at all. So we'd rather make sure that this is done properly and goes through all the original holes and everything, holds up very well. Um, so we're gonna get it done right the first time. Now, Granted that typically on these kind of boots, I, sh I showed a picture in one of our group chats with other cobblers of these being taken apart and stuff, and a few of the cobblers right away were like, why did you take the midsole off, and you know, so on and so on. And yeah, usually we don't take this midsole off on a turn welt like this. Usually the midsole is left on, it's not removed, it's not replaced, because there's not much underneath that needs to be replaced anyways. Uh, most of these boots don't have any kind of cork fillings or anything like that. You saw that we left the original padding in there because that padding is a form of insulation that's specifically designed for this boot. So we do have to leave it in place. But yeah, usually all of that stays intact. So does the midsole. And then we just replace everything that's below the midsole on these boots. But because we were doing new... Um, uh, new heel counters on these we definitely had to make sure the midsole is removed and replaced on them which obviously adds to cost because this is a fairly time consuming process as you can tell all done by hand but it's a bit of an upgrade because we adjust for tension it's you know done properly and everything so it's a mini upgrade because we're using actually a wax thread in here so the wax kind of seals seals itself up when you're uh, stitching through this so it kind of seals its own hole up in other words nicely and it's water uh, waterproof also the thread on this is waterproof because of that now our stitcher we use a nylon thread that goes through a lubricant so it gives us some waterproofing features but when you got a wax like this wax thread here definitely bumps up the waterproof feature and resistance against you know outside um, environmental damages that may occur towards stitching so wanted to point that out to everybody on these guys and what i'm using here i always want to call it an awl but it's a it's a jerk needle it's got this hook at the end of it basically so punch it through the midsole grab the thread and pull it back through or jerk it back through basically so that's what that's what it is that I'm using All right, everyone, so back here again, finished out the stitching all around the boots, so I yeah, might not be able to see too well because it's a dark color, but you can see it on the bottom here all around. Got the uh, Vibram 4014 sole, it's the Vibram Christy Wedge sole out of the oven right now, so it's nice and toasty. Go ahead and glue that guy on there. Okay. Now this is something that I'm going to allow to cure overnight um, because it's just being glued onto the onto the midsole and uh, that way tomorrow it's a lot more secure and then we can trim it some more and sand out the bottom and then be able to put on the, um, 
the Vibram Sierra sole over top. Uh, so that's typically how these guys are done. Process obviously is a little bit longer. We can technically give it about uh, 30 minutes to an hour and then sand it out. But I like to, you know, if, if I can, I like to give it more time and properly cure. And that way we have no issues whatsoever, no gaps, none of that kind of stuff. And the other thing is, anyways, I was running around all day. I was out of the shop, like, for a good couple of hours, had a few places to run. And, uh, yeah, so now it's the end of the day. And regardless, I still have to get these pressed and let them cure. And so I'll go ahead and stick that on the press real quick. And uh, I haven't shown off the press in a while, so let me go ahead and show you what that looks like. All right, so we're over at our press. We've got these pads here that are kind of soft and now we've got these different last pieces so they're like not full last they're pieces so this one's going to be doing the heel so it's going to press out the heel for us here all nice and then we're going to switch over to this one that has the foot press it's going to press out from about the heel to almost the ball of the foot and then the front from the ball of the foot to the toe area and we're going to use uh, these little wedge pieces that i have here to get a little extra pressure in certain areas of the boot need to give it a few seconds just because again the sole is hot it's active the well the adhesive is active and the sole is very malleable so it's gonna you know stick very quickly and there we go that way, so there are different types of presses. Some of them, they go upside down and they have an entire piece that pushes everything all at once, which are cool and functional, but um, I like ours because it's reverse. So if you have to use a different type of adhesive, we don't have any issues with the adhesive dripping onto the uppers. It'll just drip off the sides so you can tell and see how beat up those pads are. And the other thing is because it's a section, we do a section at a time doing just the heel then from the heel to the ball of the foot, sometimes a smaller area here, and then the ball of the foot, and then from the ball of the foot to the toe. That way it helps squeeze out any potential air pockets or bubbles out of there and uh, kind of forces them to the front little by little. And then that way there's less problems. We don't really want too many bubbles in there. Otherwise that becomes a weak point. But let me go ahead and readjust the camera. We're going to go to our 5-in-1 here. All right, so this is our 5-in-1 tabletop crank machine. Uh, some of you, if you've been watching for a while, this machine, it's got, it's got a number of features. It's got a skiver on here. It's got a weld press area, and then it's got the cutter down here. And we're going to be using the weld press area and the cutter. <clears throat> Sorry. Chewing seeds right now, and uh, had one almost get stuck there. Ooh. So the weld press, it's going to press out this area right where the welt is for us to make sure that the sole gets the best, you know, contact especially on the very edges we've got to really make sure the edges are out here very well and thankfully this thing is thick enough to do the heel area on here especially while the sole is nice and soft and it can be smushed down a little bit the sole is going to pop right back up very quickly but at least we'll get the crispy sole man a little bit of a tight squeeze there all right there we go so we got that pressed out and then our cutter usually i'll wait to cut but why not do it for the video i'm hoping the boot doesn't end up knocking off the camera or knocking over the camera but yeah this thing will just cut the bulk of everything to a certain degree and then Thing doesn't cut like all the way through especially certain materials that like this one it's softer so what happens is it cuts through the bulk up but there's always just a little bit left behind like that and we just have to rip it sound like a frog there for a second rip it but yeah takes off the bulk of it and everything now obviously uh, this is a larger sole for this one. This is one that I grabbed. Uh, majority of the ones that I have in stock right now are a larger size. And uh, since we're sanding out the tread and everything and readjusting for the height and everything, um, you know, it's no problem using a thicker or a longer sole. So, you know, otherwise, it's better to be a little too long in this case than too short. 
Now, if we were just putting the Vibram Christi soul, then we would match up the size a little more perfectly, which I have fewer of those souls in stock. And um, I got to save those for the boots and shoes that are just getting the Vibram Christi soul, nothing over top. And so since I had more of those, uh, more of the bigger ones in stock, that's what I used because the tread's going to be off here anyways. Don't have to mess with trying to center the Vibram soul too much because it's going to be sanded off. It's going to be all gone. But, you know, there you go. So that's uh, to this stage. Now I'm going to let it cure overnight. And uh, tomorrow morning I'll be able to come in, sand up the rest of this here all around, make sure it's as flush as possible, and then sand out the bottom here to get ready to put on that Vibram Sierra sole. So at this point we're done. And uh, for you guys a few seconds, for me, I'll see you tomorrow then. All right, everyone. So I kind of went through the whole process of what we were doing on these guys. Now, so we've got the, uh, you saw the Vibram uh, Christy sole on there. And so off camera, after we did the sanding, I want to at least let everybody see what the process is. We have to go back and forth and measure things out. You may have not seen it in the, vid in the video a little bit, but I did have a pen marking on the actual Christy sole um, to sand out the whole thickness and everything. But then glued this on i let it sit overnight and because this rubber uh, from the sierra sole is tougher it's a sbr rubber is what it's called so it's a solid rubber and everything and what happens with the sanding if you don't let it cure overnight is uh the friction heats up the sole and can deactivate the adhesive so i'd rather have it cure an extra period of time properly and uh you know let it sit afterwards and cool off just for a little bit before I continue on with any kind of buffing or any additional sanding. So we started out with our 24 grit sandpaper which is a little bit rougher. It takes off the bulk of uh, what was left over. Then we finished off with the 100 grit sandpaper and I didn't show it on camera but we did a little bit of touch up with the numb keg because it's so quick it takes a lot longer to readjust the camera angle at least for this process here on these boots. But there we go. We got a pair of Danner boots with a uh, new uh heel counter which i've got some boot trees or shoe trees in there kind of pushing the shape a little bit to uh, heat it up and make sure to see how the shape is sitting in there with uh some shoe trees in it and then uh new midsoles in there the vibram christie 4014 sole and the vibram sierra 1276 uh, 1276 or 1275 i believe it's 1276 it's too many numbers and styles to try to remember off the top of your head. Um, I did afterwards condition them, threw in some new laces, did a little bit of a wax coating on the toes. These toes are a little beaten up, but um, at least the wax coating will kind of restore uh, some of the uh, protection, uh, protective elements on the leather here. These are a Gore-Tex uh, lined boot. That's what that booty liner is. It's insulation and it also had the Gore-Tex liner in there, but uh, the leather, you still want to do at least a little bit of treating if you're hoping to have these for a good period time especially considering the fact that these are made in the u.s now they're recrafted in the u.s with some interesting upgrades like the vibram double sold out everyone likes to do apparently it's becoming very popular and very famous people are really loving it so if you got a pair of danners or any other types of boots definitely check out the double sole option Anyways, again, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. I'm going to go ahead and uh, let these sit overnight just a little longer. And uh, then I'm going to box them up and ship them on out to the owner. And he's going to get his boots recrafted with some extra upgrades, especially with that heel counter being upgraded too. So again, don't forget to subscribe, share the video, and uh, hit that thumbs up button if you enjoyed it. Because YouTube's algorithm apparently... Uh, helps the channel grow more the more people will give us thumbs up so if you want to see our channel grow more definitely hit that thumbs up button and share it and subscribe if you haven't already and we'll see you next time